Roughly, a meta-ethic is an account of what morality is, and how, via an ethics, we are to go about being moral. It answers questions such as how can we say we know what we need to know in order to be moral, or how we can evaluate our moral evaluations. Meta-ethics then addresses the broad philosophical questions upon which ethical discourse rests rather than addressing specific moral issues such as should fox hunting be banned. One line of criticism levelled against virtue ethics as a character-based meta-ethic rather than a duty or consequence-based one is that it fails because it can't tell us what to do. It cannot, it is argued, in simply exemplarising good character yield a clear and decisive do or don't do when faced with a morally significant behavioural choice. When what's required, it's assumed, is a code of conduct, based either on an analysis of a duty or a philosophic calculus, so simple and thorough that anyone, regardless of their character, could do the right thing by following it. A kind of moral-making algorithm, as it were, an algorithm which isn't easily derived from tales and fables that tell of the virtuous folk. This objection, often called either the action guidance or the application criticism, rests on two premises. Firstly, that a character-based meta-ethic cannot tell us what to do, and secondly, that a good meta-ethic must tell us what to do. In support of the first premise, it is suggested that character is subsequent to behaviour. Our ideas of character being derived from our observations and assessments of behaviour. And thus only comes into being after behavioural decisions have been made. Behavioural instruction must surely, however, if it is to be morally significant, come before the offensive or indeed complementary behaviour as there's little good in giving moral advice after the behavioural horse has bolted. Therefore, it is argued, character-based meta-ethics in being an after-the-fact commentary on behaviour cannot tell us what to do. In support of the second premise, it is first suggested that morality is essentially about behaviour, that moral discourse is always about either evaluating or controlling what people do, it may then be suggested that codified instruction is the only way to achieve such ends, resulting in the premise that a good meta-ethics must tell us what to do. From the premise that a character-based meta-ethic cannot tell us what to do, and the premise that a good meta-ethic must tell us what to do, it follows that virtue ethics, as a character-based meta-ethic, is a bad meta-ethic. Or so it is argued. Virtue ethicists can respond to this action guidance criticism. Contra its first premise, some virtue ethicists might point out the use of imperatives like uh, be honest or you ought to be charitable in everyday advice about what we ought to do. Or they may cite person-based exemplars wherein uh, good people are offered up to be emulated, as in the rhetorical what would Jesus do. As examples of character-based behavioural advice, utterances or exemplars like these are counter-examples to the claim that a character-based meta-ethics like virtue ethics cannot advise on behaviour. The first premise of the action guidance criticism is thereby refuted. Contra the second premise, virtue ethicists might point out that whilst a meta-ethic must ultimately seek to alter behaviour, such alteration need not necessarily be affected through instantaneous codifiable instruction. A meta-ethic with an exemplar of good character at its theoretical core could alter our behaviour. The cultivation of a character which copies that exemplar, habituating behaviour in a positive way over time. Thereby refuting the second premise as a claim that a good meta-ethic must tell us what to do, where tell implies some kind of codifiable instruction. 
In conclusion then, virtue ethics as a form of character-based meta-ethic can respond to action guidance criticisms. There is then, as yet, in our exploration of criticisms of virtue ethics, nothing contrary to cogent argument in being a virtue ethicist. Which is, in my opinion, a good thing, because I think that virtue ethics serves progressive politics better than its current deontological orthodoxy. Which is why, next time, I'll be tackling another objection to virtue ethics. Thank you for listening. 